All right, I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order. Um, the October 23rd, 2019 regular meeting of the Fenton Community High School District 100 regular board meeting to order. Uh, Mary, may I have a roll call, please? Yes. Jalwick? Here. Peyton Howell? Here. Figueroa? Here. Rago? Ramirez? Here. Ting Pao Pong? Here. Wiedemann? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Jackie, could you please uh, read our mission, our Fenton mission and belief statements? Our mission is to cultivate successful, passionate learners through rigor, relevance, and relationships. Our beliefs, successful, passionate learners thrive when we champion innovative teaching and engage learning, school and home collaborate effectively, we provide a safe, secure, and caring environment, we infuse social emotional learning into academics and culture. Diversity empowers our learning community and we provide students, oh, I'm sorry, we prepare students to fulfill their civic responsibility. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, we will now open the public hearing for the e-learning e uh, proposal. Uh, James and Jovan, will you please present the e-learning plan? Absolutely. Uh, for our audience out there, e-learning stands for emergency learning, not electronic, emergency learning. It's real simple. When the school is closed because of an emergency, usually um, poor weather, it's too okay. cold outside, inclement weather, we close the school down. That does not mean learning stops. The curriculum moves forward. Um, the administration, is, uh, with, uh, with the approval of the board, uh, gave us a green light to um, uh, submit uh, the the e-learning protocol and procedures and we have followed the protocol appropriately uh, it is in your um, board packet we've notified the parents we've notified the public we collaborated with the, uh, the associations or unions uh, and at this evening's uh, public hearing we're going to ask the board to approve the e-learning plan principal Lazarovich is there anything else you wanted to add I uh, know we've currently done training for it, and we plan on doing future training if uh, if approved at the board. So that's where our staff and our students will be. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> are there any questions or clarifications needed at this time for our members or from the audience? I, you know, can I? Yeah. Or are you? Sure. Maybe. Sure. Yeah, can for I both. Sure. Oh. Yes. All right. Um, and Michelle, you probably can speak to this, but or I don't know. Sure. Um, I don't get um, how you're going to hold the students accountable for doing their time. They're doing their five hours. So I know you they check in second period and check out in seventh period, but they have to do it by 1 p.m. And I mean, I, I don't get the accountability there. I guess I need a further quote. What do you mean accountability? Like how, how do we know that they're actually doing the work? How do we know they're online doing the work that the teachers because they have to check in by 1 p.m., but how sure. do they check in the second period and and out it? Let's see. I'll see if I can find that. Not sure the question. So, I, are you at? Because it sounds like you're asking two things. Okay. So, the first thing is, is they have to do attendance. So they're either going to check in with their second hour or their seventh hour teacher. One or we the have other. Right. Because we have okay. students that are in TCD, and so they don't have a second hour, and some students don't have a seventh hour. So we okay. made the accommodation to have students check in one or the other to make sure that they're checked in. So okay. that, that's part of the attendance piece. So that way teachers know that they have logged, they've looked and they've logged in. As far as monitoring their five hours online, mm -hmm. that's through Google Classroom and we have a system for that to make sure that students are on for five hours. Now, can they log on and do, uh, yeah, of course they can, and just like uh, other students, but there will be assignments that will push the curriculum forward that the teachers will have posted on there to make sure that they're holding the students accountable for that work as they continue to go forward. Um, so it's not just, hey, here's this, and then you have five hours to, to do all of this online. It's actual assignments that will be that will be taken care of 
and again, it's to push the curriculum forward. It's not just a, a uh, day off. Yep, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Does that? Did I answer them? Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's, right. I, it, I was confused because it sounded like you they check in in second period and check out in seventh period, but it's just one time. A yeah, it's just one. So they just uh, and okay. the the teachers again they'll go through. There's a spot where, where it's an e-learning in their Google Classroom. There's a a way for the students to take it to to acknowledge that they have checked in uh -huh. the teachers will then take the attendance they'll log in into power school then so that way we can have a running total and then for students that don't check in we as the administration will calm down what happened did you have power outages? and then we'll we'll rectify those those absences the next day so, okay mm -hmm. so, or so they don't have to necessarily go um, eight to three they can go you know one to six you depending know, upon as yeah as, as long as the in. word gets in and that's when the teachers okay. will be responsible to to um, answer questions to via email or through the Google classroom if there's a, um, a posting for instance if they're doing like a, a thought process on there hey I want you guys to think about this you know as we've moved the, the curriculum forward um, and I have something about Shakespeare perhaps as they go through and then the kids have to to respond to it and then you have to respond to somebody else's post you know so yeah, it's one of those yeah, kind of things okay. um, but the teacher will be monitoring that and then again just for the five hours they have to be doing work for that seat time for it so okay. does that is that a little bit better so yes. i'm sorry for yes. my confusion on yeah, that too so too. I, okay all right i guess i was confused too didn't know okay. what to ask that okay. makes it a very confusing question <laughs> it sure. Does. Sure. I, may, I may have missed it too but how do we address have we probably have but um the, the notion of kids that don't have access or have a lack of access. Have we looked yes, into we do. that? And I, I can answer that quickly. Yeah. Um, when the notifications came out, we have one phone call in regards to that uh, kit, and we addressed that real quickly. We have yeah. mobile apps to, to have Wi-Fi. Oh. Exactly. Okay. So uh, That's good. there was also a survey, Jim, you could step in here in regards to the percentage of our students that have Wi-Fi at home. Sure. So it's a, um, it's one. Uh, there's a multi-part plan for this. One is we have data from our registration process, where we asked in a couple different ways if families have Wi-Fi, have internet access at home. So we have a baseline of a, approximately how many of our our families, or how many of our students don't have that access at home. Uh, we're going to use that for a communication plan. We're also going to offer. And this may benefit some uh, um, some other families too. There's uh, a couple different programs that we can sort of market uh, that would provide very very low cost internet access for families that want to just you know hadn't thought about it before, weren't aware that these options were available. And then uh, finally, we'll offer uh, we'll contract with one of a, a few different uh, vendors. I've already been in contact with vendors that will pro provide little hotspots. So we'll check out a hotspot to a student just like we do a Chromebook, and that will give their Chromebook access to the internet independently, and we will subsidize that, that process so that all those kids can have, have access. We haven't pulled the trigger on any of those contracts or anything until we get the approval. So once, once this, assuming this gets approved tonight, then I'll move ahead with those contracts with those folks to get them in place, still not sign until we get approval from the ROE, because we don't want to commit the funding until we know that we're we're moving forward with it so Jim but we have all that in process Jim, the top of your head how many of our, our uh, students do not have Wi-Fi at home it was, we're looking it was at about moment. five or six percent based on the initial information so but we're hoping to actually with some of these uh, highly discounted plans to actually reach more of those more of the folks just to give them a break on what they're currently paying on the on uh, internet access as well so use it as sort of a, a double win if you will Any other questions? Thank you, Jen. Okay, then um, if there's nothing else, then we will now close the public hearing for the e-learning plan. Um, and then we'll move on to recognitions. Rick, I think you have one. Hi, I'm not sure how close I gotta be to the mic. Uh, this is for a student, Virginia Salazar. She is a pretty busy, active student. She said she was going to try and make it in between some of her stuff, so she 
must still be tied up. But uh, she was named a commended student in the 2020 National Merit Scholarship Program for her score on the PSAT last year, which is also the same metric for NMSP, which is the National Merit Scholar Program. So her score ranked in the top 50,000 scores of all 1.5 million scores throughout the country. So she's in the top 3% in the country. Um, when she was given her letter by her counselor, uh, Mr. Paul Welsh, he said this is not surprising and nothing new because she's got a very long streak of straight A's. And she actually uh, was very surprised and very humbled. I'm trying to, I was hoping she would say this stuff, but she's obviously very, very busy and very active. Um, but yeah, she's high marks and she just really likes her classes and said it rolled over into the test. That's good, let's give her a hand. Yeah. And if, we, if she comes in, we'll recognize her if she comes a little late. Okay. Good, good. All right, then uh, next, James, is board recognitions. We have three board recognitions. Very, very proud of the board. The first one is the Fenton board uh, received the school board governance recognition, and they will be honored on October 30th at the DuPage dinner. So, board, thank you so much. Mary, do we have any uh, certificate for our, all of our board members? We have not had this, at least in my tenure, uh, this recognition. So I just wanted to let the board know that, uh, and the public know that we're very proud Thanks. that the board is going to all of the activities. They're getting professional development, they're getting trained, they do the retreats, uh, they're committed to their position. Okay. Picture? No, just kidding. Oh, we will take his picture. The, 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 sec, the second recognition uh, by three of our board members they have been recognized as master board <coughs> member level one, and that's Mary Ann, Patty, and Juliet. Nice. <laughs> Do we have a certificate for them? No. No, no okay, we good. did it okay, at yeah. dinner. And they're also going to be recognized October 30th at the two-page uh, uh, dinner. And lastly, we have Paul being recognized by the Illinois Association of School Board as the IASB DuPage Division Director at Large Member. So he'll be part of the executive team for DuPage. So we would like to recognize him. Okay, thank you, James. Um, Can we take a picture, though? Real quick. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Before I forget. I was saying you should. <laughs> <laughs> now you got it. Come on, kids, sit over here. Course. Jackie. You sit down. Should we hold up on Driving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we move on to public comments. Mary, do we have any speakers? Yes, we do. Uh, Mr. Subak would like to, to address the board this evening. Sure. My approach, Mr. President? Yes, you may. <laughs> uh, thank you. My name is uh, Marshall Subak. I have two daughters at Fenton High School. I had one that graduated last year. I'm here to talk briefly about uh, standards-based grading. I think now it's called evidence-based grading. I think they're probably one and the same. Uh, personally, uh, I have a little bit of a, I'm not a big fan of the standards-based or evidence-based grading, but I admit I am not an educator, uh, and I can see this is where education seems to be going, but I do trust the board and I trust staff and the administrators that they're always trying to do what's best for the kids. Uh, I do have to recognize Ms. Papa Nicolau. Last year I met with her when I heard standards-based grading was coming or possibly coming. I didn't see that the board had taken any action on it yet. So I met with her and she was great. Sat down with me for about an hour, answered all of my questions, went over my concerns, 
uh, and took input from me as far as what I thought was not the greatest thing about it. I see it being implemented slowly uh, amongst some of the teachers. Uh, last year, my sophomore, my freshman then, sophomore now, her English teacher uh, implemented the standards-based grading. As a high school freshman, she was not happy about it, but high school freshmen don't know everything. Uh, they came from, at the Wooddale Junior High, standards-based grading. And I can tell you, for my kids, they were thrilled to get to grades. Uh, and then when they, my freshman, now sophomore, thought, oh, no, here we go again with this one, two, three, four. Uh, teacher got them settled down. And I, and I credit the teacher because when I met with her as well, I think there were three parents, one of the board members met as well, uh, and we raised their concerns to the teacher. She wasn't doing it. She, it was actually more work for her. And she was doing it not just to keep doing the same thing. She thought it's what's best for the students. That's a wonderful attitude. It's not as teacher uh, just doing what's always done. My concern is just making sure of two things. Um, I want to make sure you guys don't eliminate grades. I think grades are something that do matter for the kids because, quite honestly, I don't know if they understand the standards-based grading as well as grades. And grades aren't perfect either. I think the great thing to do, but again, I'm not an educator, would be giving the kids a grade with a percentage so they know uh, I know kids coming from the Wooddale Junior High that used to get my, my oldest. Thought she was brilliant. Is my time up already? Can I go beyond? Uh, my oldest used to get fours in math. She thought she was great at math. Uh, got to Fenton and realized that a four in junior high wasn't an A, even though that's the kid's perception, because they did it as one, two, three, four, and that'd be a natural thought. Um, so. I want to make sure grades aren't eliminated for two things. One, I think they matter for the kids. I think parents are able to see a grade and understand what it is. But most importantly, for colleges, as we're going through this application process, uh, a lot of the colleges now, as far as scholarships, are doing it based upon grades and SATs. And I don't know if the colleges are ever going to get away from that. So as far as getting discounts from tuition, you have to have a grade. So I would ask respectfully someday, not tonight, but the board adopt a policy to say, you know, we can do standards-based grading or evidence-based grading, whatever the teachers and administrators think is best, but it's a board policy to say we still want to have grades at the end. Uh, and I think that's a policy decision the board should be able to implement. The second board policy I think you should implement along these lines was standards-based grading or evidence-based grading doesn't mean the elimination of final exams. One of your obligations at Fenton High School, and it's, it's kind of in the, your goals, is you have to get these kids ready for the next level. Whether, and that's not easy, whether it's trade school, going to work, or going to college. And as far as getting them to the next level, part of that is taking a final exam. One of the things I was a little disappointed with my freshman uh, English teacher last year is my daughter didn't get a final exam. And the teacher's response was, well, I had enough evidence based not to have to give them an exam. I knew they may met their criteria. They knew their stuff, so we didn't need to give an exam. I even bothered Ms. Pop Nicolau on the way in here about this. And she said, now there's kind of a discussion that the English department in general might stop giving final exams with the evidence-based grading. I, in the multiple choice format. Okay, in the multiple choice format. I don't care what the format is, uh, and I would leave that up to the teachers. I'm not, trying, I'm not trying to tie their hands, but I think there's value in a final exam because that's what they do at the next level. There's value in that classes are stopped, the kids are off for two or three days, and it's time to study, and you're going to get a final exam. Uh, I, it's just something that's of value, in my opinion, as a parent, that the child is tested. I don't want them to have the first time taking the final exam to be at University of Illinois or University of Dayton or somewhere else and they have that stress level that I've never taken a final exam. I'd rather have them try, fail, or do great on a final exam at Fenton High School so uh, they can accommodate when they're in college the following year or wherever it is. So the second board policy would be to set a policy that they can't eliminate, that they, the teacher should not eliminate final exams as part of the evidence-based grading. Seniors, second semester, I don't care about that. They've already checked out. Uh, so that I'm not worried about. But otherwise, I still think there is value in a final exam. Thank you. And also, 
I believe there's a rumor that Ms. Vera's leaving after this year. And I just want to object as a parent, because uh, she's a fantastic teacher. So uh, if that's true, Don't put in the minutes that there's an objection to uh, her, her retirement. So you just told the whole world we're on video. Oh, I'm OK, good. So I object to Ms. Vera. I think you, if she can do one more year, if we can sweeten the pot a little bit, that would be great to get Sarah through Spanish 3. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. No further speakers, Mary, right? No. That's it. Okay. All right. Uh, then we move on to the District 100 reports. James? Sure, absolutely. The first one is the Finance Facility Committee meeting update earlier on at 6 o'clock. Next slide, please, Jim. Hey, Juliet. How are you? Hello. Okay. Uh, one more. Real quick, uh, we presented to the board uh, a facility assessment um, that they gave us a green light on in regards to our facilities. Uh, real quick summary, we have an aging facility. This assessment will answer many things, including the infrastructure, safety and liability, future generation, expert assessments. Experts will come in here and assess our, our, our building. It will act as a baseline, a map of what we need to fix, where we need to go. And uh, it's a proactive and common sense approach in regards to spending our money on what to fix, where to fix it, and when to fix it. Um, that is a quick summary of our facility assessment. During the uh, discussion action item, uh, we're asking the board to approve um, the motion to move ahead, uh, to go ahead with the facility assessment uh, set forth by STR. The next one is the portrait of a graduate, and we have a video for you. Hi, I'm Suviana. I'm a senior at Hudson High School. I'm Sarah, I'm an eighth grader at Blackhawk. I'm Victor, and I'm an eighth grader at Blackhawk. We are all members of the portrait of a graduate committee. The portrait, when finished, will give students something to strive for. Today we worked on making a visualization of what empowers a graduate. My favorite visualization was cultural empowerment because everyone can relate and voice their own opinions. My favorite adjective is academically because it's the main reason why we're, we're in school. I think being creatively empowered is most important because it allows everyone to voice their ideas and be an individual. I like the idea of the screen, but we thought we'd shape it more into a pencil this time to draw out the future. You'll be seeing our finished portrait of a graduate soon. I hope you're empowered. And in summary, as you guys know, what is the portrait of a graduate? Jackie, step up in here, uh, Kit, and, and Paul. It's really what, what we would like to see in our students when they graduate. Okay, what are the attributes, the skill set, and values? that we would like to see they have when they graduate. Uh, this is the second meeting. Uh, there's going to be a third meeting November 4th, and we hope to finalize uh, the portrait of a graduate. We have hired a um, graphic designer to create a design, kind of like our, 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 our vision and mission statement, kind of like our AP district of the year. Or so it's, it's, it's there. It symbolizes what a bison should look like and what, to, what did sh they should possess after 12 years of education. We're really, really excited. Jackie, Paul, Kit, anything you guys want to state? Well, I like the idea that the whole community, we've got District 7, Wooddale, we've got District 2, Bensonville, and Fenton, we're all collaborating together to make sure our students are well-rounded and they can strive no matter what their goals are. And basically let them know that we are all lifelong learners and they should never stop. So, and feel part of the community because that's very important. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, um, uh, I think it, it's partly to do with the alignment of vision for mm -hmm. our education system here. Uh, all the districts getting together and uh, pretty much clarifying what the community as a whole wants uh, in our, our graduates coming out of this entire school district so it's it's a phenomenal experience yeah I just want to add that we've had some really good conversations some enthusiastic uh, people the participants are really into it um, and it's all for the same thing to try to get a seamless co cohesive um, result of what a portrait portrait of a graduate is from all three uh, districts so I mean I I think we've done a Everyone all together has done a really good job. It's been very uh, engaging, 
and there's a lot of enthusiasm in there, and I th I'm really uh, looking forward to the uh, result that we're going to have. Very good. So it will be finalized November 4th. Um, all three districts will finalize it, and hopefully in December, our board here at Fenton will approve it. So we could kick it off, launch it, get it off the ground uh, for our January return from, from winter break. Okay? Next slide. Real quick, summer hours. Summer hours, we put a lot of thoughts in regards to summer hours. Real quickly, here's a quick summary. Summer hours for 12-month employees. Um, that in includes um, our, our association, our FLOSS 12-monthers, our, our administrators. It excludes grounds and custodians, okay, and some administrators because they have to be in the building. We're moving from a five-day work week to a four-day work week, okay? Why are we doing that? It's really powered by the students. As you know, this will also affect the students that have a five-day um, summer school schedule. It will be four-day. Why are we moving for students? For the students, we believe it's good for students. It's summertime, by the way, okay? Oh, yeah. It's summertime. It's good for families, number two, okay? That they are able to go on vacation three day a week because summer school is basically two months, all of June, I'm sorry, all of June and half of July. Number three, finance costs. It's cheaper to run a facilities like this in the summertime in four days instead of five. So there's that one day of, of saving costs. And lastly, our custodians, construction, our grounds can take care of special projects, whether it's painting, whether it's fixing, I don't know, the, some of the stuff in the field house. So it's, it's a safe, it, I'm sorry, it's a student-based decision, it's a uh, facilities decision, and it's also a, a cost decision. Um, Sam has worked very hard to, to speak to all of the individual, individuals involved, okay, and there isn't too much. Okay, too many individuals, I believe there were like 12 or 15 individuals that will be affected. Um, times will be adjusted, okay? During the four day work week, 45 minutes will be adjusted so that the pay, uh, the time allotted is, is equal for everybody. So the day will be a little longer? For 45 them? minutes, yes. Okay. Okay. Now, mind you, the current schedule right now, we end at 1245, 1230, Mary, is that correct? on a Friday on summer. One o'clock. One o'clock, okay. So we we have it already, okay. Let's go ahead and, and do this, what's what's right for kids, what's right for the family. And it's also cost saving, and it's also for staff. Hey, look, we could we have the opportunity um, uh, in the summer to really reduce and have some of these goals put in place. So I just wanted to make sure you're aware of it, uh, the board is aware of it, our community is gonna be aware of it also um, summer school, instead of five days a week, is going to be four days a week. I forget about that. Also in transportation, there's some cost saving as well. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, summer hours yeah, and I yeah. Do. A lot of companies go to summer hours. They give them a three-day weekends and, and I, yeah, I think it's good all around. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on Johnson. going from five to four days? I, mean, I, I myself think it's a good idea too. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is sustainability, okay? At the last board meeting, we concluded that, the, uh, that we proceed with sustainability with a statement or a belief statement, okay? Um, in speaking with the administrators and just thinking about it, I recommend uh, that in order to achieve this, a better avenue would be a policy committee meeting that could generate this, um, this approach, this one option, and or as you know, our strategic plan will end next year, okay? As that new committee forms, bring it up at that situation. I think that's more apropos at the right vehicle to really dive in and discuss where we wanna go with sustainability. Okay, so it's, th there's the avenues there. Now I know we're gonna have another policy meeting, okay, in March, okay? And I think we could really dive in in regards to that. And I'm looking at you <laughs> because, yeah. you know, I just want to make sure you're, that, that's, I know this is you're something you're passionate about. So you sure. want to make sure, hey, look, we want to keep this positive. We want to make sure you're recognized. And hey, look, I'm personally uh, listening yeah. um, as an administrator. Those are the two avenues that I would recommend. Um, so so our, our next policy meeting is, is when? Pro March. In March. Yeah, normally in the spring. So that's like next year. Um, 
I was wondering if we could uh, begin to maybe even like create a committee, um, a separate committee to uh, brainstorm, um, you know, start really developing that prior to the March Policy Committee. Part of it, I think, is just to brainstorm and research, right? Because I, I did some research on my own as far as um, what our IS, ISB uh, policy book, you know, how we base a lot of our uh, policy, we adopt it and we customize it to, to our school. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't notice any of that. So we're, we're almost, well, we're literally putting together something from scratch. Um, did some research on uh, some corporate uh, skeleton policies, um, <coughs> institutional, and so um, if I can, you know, ask for um, consensus on this, where um, the timeline might be a little earlier, where you know we could set up a committee just to develop it so that we can present it to the policy committee down the road, at least get something started. Usually, um, yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. When I'm. I'm the um, the items that we're already following, the best practices, and then the two policies that we already have on sustainability are are pretty comprehensive already. There's already a lot being done in sustainability, you know, as as was outlined at the uh, meeting. You know, so I think we already already have a robust sustainability. Um, we don't have a policy per se, but we do have activities that support sustainability in many ways through either student initiatives or just through best practices in the school. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I mean, I just want you to be aware, I mean, we, we already have things in place or items in place or activities in place that support sustainability as much as we can yeah. being in the school environment and not in the private sector. Yeah, so I agree with that. I, I, I working with James with the uh, exchanging um, communication, I saw that we're making efforts on it. Uh, the question is, are we recognizing that a, as a, a formal effort? Because we, we look at it, we go, okay, uh, yes, we're making efforts on um, reducing our carbon footprint. We're putting, um, you know, uh, water fountains in to, to, to help with uh, reducing plastic, right? Um, and the, the question is, are we formally, uh, formally as a, as a school, as a school district here, recognizing that as part of our effort? And so that's where the policy would come in to help formulate that formal vision. I guess I'm just a technical yeah. um, comments real quick. This is a policy issue. Mm -hmm. We have a policy to committee. so. I'm not really in favor of starting a committee, a committee beyond a uh, policy committee to create a policy committee. Mm -hmm. We have that in place. Um, I think what I'm hearing is, hey, look, could we discuss this sooner than March? That's Correct. what I think I'm hearing. Um, how about this? As because we want to move on, um, if we could move the the, poli the policy meeting a little bit earlier uh, this year, perhaps a January. Okay, as, a, as an idea. Um, what, what are the obstacles of forming a committee? I'll ask that. Well, we already have a framework in place, you know, with the policy committee. And it would, I mean, just well, like, in like terms James of, said, we'd have a committee to pre-work. A committee? To do pre-work for all over a uh, committee already. Right. So, so that, that, that's, that would be, the, I mean, the purpose of the policy committee. Right. So my, my question again is, what are the obstacles or uh, of, of starting a committee where we're researching and looking at the feasibility of it to then bring up to the policy committee? So this is about creating a, 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 an idea of a, a sustainability or green policy to implement in the school system. And, and, and mind you, if it's not created, it has to take time to do that. So. Imagine if we push it to March or January, that means that formulating that would take a lot longer to process, correct? So my question is, um, would the board be willing to um, examine and look into um, ideas on how to even formulate the policy since there's not something formally in place? Even with ISBE, 
there's not that as a skeleton or template to even work on. This would be something that Fenton would, would be able to look at and say, okay, we're, we're doing this because we value um, this as an inherited uh, culture for our students. Our students know that they're inheriting this, this, this world. Well, right? co correct, yeah. me, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is, is that, that we, we want to ensure that, that Fenton High School District 100 values sustainability. That you, that there, this, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. that you, this needs to be formalized. You need this formalized in, in a statement. And I yeah. think at the last meeting, that's what, that's what we were alluding to is that we would formulate the statement that Fenton High School values sustainability in where possible and in all their practices. Right. So it, we we can still formulate that statement, and I think that, as I understand it, I mean that's really the end goal of what you're looking for is to um, have this statement for Fenton High School. When well, you even say more, even more so is having the sustainability policy that can be, could look at all of our best practices, you know, throughout the facility. Right? I mean, that's what, I mean, I know we have something in place already, you know, as part of our operational services, yep, you know, it's not called sustainability, but it, there's, you know, there are things that are in a policy already, but what you want is something that like sets a standard for how we, um, for the lights that we buy, for the, um, how the garbage is disposed of, how food service is, you know, served and things like that, right? Something, yeah. a, a standard yeah. to uh, policy I guess to. A formal way of, um, process of decision making a, a formal way you know we, we already consider that um, in terms of um, you know cost effectiveness right that's one of the bleeding or copy or criteria yeah but you know how do we how do we look at our practices <coughs> to reduce a carbon footprint in all aspects of our facility and operations um, I mean look at our tables right here we've got water bottles all around us you know how are we looking at this and examining going okay how do we do better with plastic reduction? Um, you know, so again, we're making efforts, we're doing that, but asking ourselves, you know, those questions, how do we actually do that and, and keep going with that okay. in a cost-effective, responsible way? In, in our efforts of time, I, yeah. I, th I could summarize it this way. I think there needs to be a dialogue by the board. Okay? Absolutely. That's number one. Number two, perhaps we could have a, a policy meeting at the beginning of the next board meeting to speed it up a little bit and sure. really just that's the number one topic for that topic. I think they would, uh, we could have a real rich conversation and you could develop your ideas and, and the, the board could give your feedback um, at that time. I think, I think that, that would okay. be a good idea. Okay. And then we can uh, delve into it further. Formulate it more. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's it. <clears throat> Okay, so there's uh, after sustainability, we, there's no other items. Nope, nothing. Okay, so then we'll go. We'll move to the consent agenda. Um, we have quite a few items on there. Does anyone have any questions or issues with any anything on the consent agenda? We, okay. The banners. Yeah. So the banners that are up. Don't they, do they list um, like the wins that we've had already? It's just, just says it's MSC banners. football or? No, or, it, or what just, it'll say, it's, it's actually the other school's banners. Uh -huh. So it'll say Timothy Christian or it says uh, Bishop McNamara. Uh -huh. So we had those and so we're just, we're, okay. we're gonna repurpose those, yeah. Okay, it doesn't list their wins or anything. No, like no. Or no, no, we have that, on, that's on either wall when you go into the field house, it talks okay. about conference championships, sectional championships, that kind of, that's on the side walls, so. I knew that'd be easy. That was easy. You can't have a banner. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. You can't have a banner. Yeah. I, yeah. Darn. <laughs> 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 I've talked to Becker. Okay. Um, oh. Is there sure. something else? The the business school going oh, the field trip. There, yeah, the field the, trip. Is there are, was there a purpose to go to the southern? D um, they have done that region? for a couple of years okay. at Tennessee oh. uh, with our business, uh, our student uh, uh, taking business classes. That. Okay. That's the DEI, the entrepreneurship class specifically. Yeah. So yeah. this is actually their um, 
um, their kind of center school. Their region. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. At least five years. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> okay, then may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda as presented? Can we make a motion? A second. You. Marianne, thank you. Juliet, <coughs> roll call, please, Mary. Peyton Howell? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Ting Pong? Yes. Wiedemann? Yes. Okay, then we move on to the discussion action items. Uh, the first one is the facility assessment proposal that we have already discussed. James, if you want to just give a synopsis again. Just real quick, it's needed for our, our, our district. Uh, our building is very old, 1955. Um, it's a common sense uh, approach of, of what needs to be fixed. It's a roadmap, it's a baseline. We're really asking um, the board to, uh, to approve it. Uh, I know the uh, finance committee has get, given us the green light to move forward, and we will start this project immediately after approval. It's, it's been Can I just have a yes, question? Um, I noticed that uh, in that proposal, they had excluded a couple of things, such as like hazardous um, removal of hazardous materials Material. or whatever that we would have to get our own proposals for that or whatever. Good question. What are we looking at as far as do you know any idea who we would, who we would, who we would get for that and also yeah. what that cost we would be? We have a company that we typically go with that, that will estimate, like for example, like when are we doing tile, we have to do asbestos abatement of some sort. Right. We have a company that comes out, they take a sample, they break it down, they'll you know, and then they'll determine what what's needed to abate that. So. What STR is saying, they're not the experts in that arena. That's a specialized area. And so there are people out there that are more uh, specifically can assess what that cost would be. Okay. Um, and then they find people that do that type of work, and then we get proposals that come in. So typically, good question. I mean, so, so it doesn't mean we'll have to eventually take that into account but that's not their area of expertise right. they, they can identify it and, and then we can take that from there and go to another company and say okay here's what we got what what does this mean okay thank you any, any other questions okay then um, may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the facility condition and educational adequacy assessment <coughs> service project for a cost of thirty-six thousand eight hundred dollars. I will make a motion. Thank you, Marianne. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Leo. Roll call, please, Mary. Peyton Howell. Yes. Figueroa. Yes. Rago. Yes. Ramirez. Yes. Ting Pel Pong. Yes. Jalwick? Yes. Weedman? Yes. Okay, the next. Okay, the motion has passed. Uh, the next item is the 2019 estimated tax levy. Bruce, anything further or? Uh, no, what we're asking for is the board to approve the estimated tentative tax levy this evening uh, with an increase of 4.97%. Um, that's a, an estimate greater than what we believe we'll receive, um, but it's an estimate based on uh, projection of new property. Not knowing what that actual new, new construction will be, um, we do estimate higher, but of course the uh, tax cap comes into play and will only allow the district to extend taxes for uh, up to that uh, tax cap level amount, which is 1.9%. Um, so taxpayers are protected with how far we can go to increase our levy um, but we do levy greater than what we expect just to ensure that we capture all of our new property so um, we're asking the board to approve a levy tonight um, estimated levy of 4.97 percent um, with the final levy presented to the board at our November board meeting okay thank you Bruce uh, any other any questions Okay, then may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the 
2019 estimated tax levy is presented that reflects an increase of 4.97 percent. I make motion that we uh, approve the tax levy of 4.9 percent. Okay, thank you, Patty. Second. Thank you, Jackie. Mm -hmm. uh, roll call, please. Peyton Howell? Yes. Rago? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Ting Pao Pong? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Wiedemann? Yes. Okay, now a uh, motion has passed. Uh, the next item is the e the approval of the e-learning e plan. Um, we've gone all the, over that comprehensively. I don't know, James, is there anything else? We're, we're, we're asking the board uh, for the recommendation, uh, we're giving them the recommendation to approve the uh, e-learning plan. Could I ask one question on yes. that also? Um, every time I read it, I don't know why it was confusing me, but do the kids have to check in by 11 or be finished by I mean, yeah, by one? Too. Is a big question. By one or are they finished by one? Like, I don't know why that was. Principal Lazarevich? They just have to check in by 1 o'clock. They have to check in by 1 o'clock and then they have to check out by. There's no checkout. So it's just the amount of time. We monitor the amount of time that they're actually in Google Classroom working on it. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't know sure. why. I was, every time I read it, I was very confused. That's okay. See, I wasn't alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she <laughs> did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was a much more thorough answer. <laughs> okay, it's fine. So I got it. <laughs> like, at least that was, we weren't the only ones. We're after the mic. There's two of us. Other people felt the same. Just kidding. Oh. Okay, then may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the e-learning plan as presented? So moved. Second. Thank you, Juliet. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, roll call, please, Mary. Peyton Howell? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Team Paul Pung? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Weedman? Yes. Okay, the next item is the bus lease agreement, and that's Bruce. Yes, on page 121, we have the um, recommendation to approve a bus lease agreement with Midwest Transit Santander. This probably sounds a little bit familiar. The board did approve two buses this past June um, for a five-year lease with Midwest Transit and, and Santander, as I mentioned. Um, the reason for this kind of mid-year uh, replacement is the, our, one of our buses that we owned was involved in a collision. The bus, um, we initially thought we were going to be able to repair it, but the um, damage, internal damage, I guess, if you will, was more extensive than what uh, was expected, what we had anticipated. So the insurance company basically, uh, the bus was a total loss. So. Um, the, it wasn't our fault. The, uh, uh, another vehicle collided with our bus. There was no injuries. There was no one on no on the bus just, other than the driver. Um, the person who hit us was not injured, um, but it unfortunately, uh, I believe, totaled her car, the person who hit us, and, and our bus as well. Um, so her insurance company, we reached a settlement um, of that $21,906.70. Um, and that those funds would be used to uh, fund this lease that we're recommending now um, and it would in, a, in essence pay for two years of the lease payment um, and this pricing would be remain the same as, as it were, uh, was presented back in June so they're honoring that that same uh, leased price for a five-year lease so um, that's our uh, where we're at right now with our bus lease and why we're presenting it this evening so we do need to replace it in our fleet. Um, we've been short since this happened in August. We've been working through this with the insurance company for that period of time to finally reach the settlement, so. So this bus is needed. It's, it's missing. It, it is, is, yeah, we're we're in need of to replace it for sure. Are we We are, yeah, yeah, we've been, they've been very gracious with that, yes. Okay. All right, thank you, Bruce. Um, Can we rent it from them? I'm sorry? Oh, I don't recommend that. Mm -hmm. All right, then may I have a motion that the Board of Education authorize the administration uh, to enter into a five-year lease agreement with Midwest Transit Santander Bank for one school bus as presented? I'll make a motion. Thank you, second. Jackie. Thank you, Patty. Uh, roll call, please. Mary? Yes. Peyton Howell? Yes. Ting Pong? 
Yes. 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 Jalowick? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Weedman? Yes. Motion has passed. All right. The next item is the working cash fund abatement. And Bruce, if you could take that. Sure. You may recall that we talked about this in the tentative budget. We also uh, uh, talked about it at our final budget hearing in, in September. Um, the uh, working cash fund um, abatement, partial abatement, mm -hmm. abatement it would be a $400,000 transfer um, to the transportation fund. Um, there, the transportation fund has been kind of um, uh, not balanced. Uh, our operating funds in, in all, in total, are balanced, but the uh, transportation fund is not. Uh, we've been trying to write that better. Part of the problem is the state aid from the uh, state of Illinois has not kept pace with what we need in that uh, fund to balance that fund. Um, so we've been spending down fund balance. We've had adequate fund balances for the past several years. However, uh, if we don't make this transfer, we would end with a negative balance at the end of the year, uh, which we can't do. So we're recommending um, that we transfer funds from the working cash fund to the transportation fund. And that's really what that fund is intended for, to, to make loans or internal transfers uh, to avoid the cost of external borrowing and that type of thing. So. Um, we're recommending uh, to approve that trans transfer or, uh, resolution uh, tonight as presented. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Any questions? All right, then may I have a motion that the Board of Education adopt the resolution abating the working cash fund as uh, presented? So moved. Second. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, roll call, please. Peyton Howell? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Ting Pong? Yes. Wiedemann? Yes. All right. Motion, that motion has passed. All right. The final item is the uh, 2019 IASB resolutions, um, which you should have all gone through the 18 items on the, uh, all the 18 items on the resolution. Um, we'll be taking a straw poll on each resolution so that I can take back the board's recommendations uh, to the delegates at Triple uh, I um, as far as our vote is our collective vote for Fenton. We have one vote, it's a Fenton vote. Non binding. Uh, yeah, it's a non binding uh, resolution. So I think the best way to go through this is if I'm going to read out the number. Um, that's on the resolution you know, in order of all 18 and when I say the number if you do wish to to adopt that resolution just raise your hand any questions and I will do this I think that would be the easiest and I agree. most expeditious yes um, well let's go with uh, number one Number two. Wait a minute. What are we doing? I'm so sorry. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I have a migraine today, so okay, I'm sorry. I'm right. a little okay. off. All right, I'm going to I'm going to read the number of the resolution. Okay. You know, as, as it's in the booklet. Okay. I'm going to go in order. So the number one is the first one that's on there. It's number one. Yeah. So I'll say number one, and then if you do want to adopt it, oh. in other words, do adopt. Do adopt it. it. If it's a positive. I gotcha. If it's a positive, then just, raise, raise your, your hand. hand. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Should we do? Let's do number one over again. Okay. Yes. Okay. So number, so number one. Okay. So two, three. Two, three. All right. So we have three. Okay. Two. Number two. Uh, number three. Hold on. Give us just a second to like we sure. um, like. Let me orient ourselves to it, if you don't mind, just sure. a second. Could I ask a question about this one? This is when I sure, do, are you versed on it? Yes. Um, Number two. 
could you explain it in a little more detail? Is it real, just mean, real basic language. I mean, Here it is. Historically, what folks of color, women, right. individual disabilities, and veterans have not been considered right. by school district to take on contracts. Mm -hmm. This is just for consideration that a school district, if there is a female-owned business, let's say asbestos, right, mm -hmm. that we look at them, okay, because traditionally, historically, they have not. So That's would, what it's all about. They could put a bid in. That doesn't necessarily mean exactly. that we, we would have to. Anybody exactly. could put a bid in. Anyone okay. could put, Anybody a, could yes. put a bid in. I think that's, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it seems, okay. That's right. two. So that's, that's two. two. So that's let's do two. two again then, after we've got that clarification. So number two. So if we want to adopt it, we raise Do it. adopt, yeah. If it's a positive, do adopt. Okay. I'm not ready for this. Okay, number three. Four. Yeah, one, two, three. Three? No. Or number four. Raise your hand. Four. Okay, we're at number four. One, two. Okay, number five. Five. Six. Okay, number six. Okay, we got six. Uh, number seven. Kind of yeah, we do that already. Okay, that was number seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's yeah, do already, number. That's already a policy. The what? That's already a I policy, think. isn't it? I think it was like there's some schools that don't. Like right, southern states. This is for all of Illinois. Yeah, okay. yeah it doesn't mean we don't do it. No. Okay, this is the is me mm -hmm. It's all amended. Eight. So number eight. Okay, uh, number nine. Same thing. Oh, I don't think we're going to have that problem here. All right, let's. Isn't that the same thing? I mean, what? I think no. it's large, it says five hundred thousand. Yeah, some half, half a million. Right, so it doesn't pertain to us, but it's. Peoria. We wish, right, James? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> half a million? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, let's let's do number nine again. Okay. I was looking down. One, two, Who's this one? Do you have yours up? I do. Okay, did you? I saw yours up. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, thank you. Number 10. You're getting paid? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to double your salary. Is that what that says? Compensation. <laughs> Any kind. Double or nothing is still nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like All right, that number movie? 11. <laughs> That's not oh, taxable. Oh, it's fine. Wait, number 11 what, is. Number 11. Okay, we're doing number 11. Okay. Uh, number 12. I can't just say yes. Thirteen. Thirteen. All right, number fourteen. Okay, four, we're doing fourteen. Oh. Fifteen. We're doing fifteen right now. Okay. Need more time on fifteen? I 
I'm on that. I'm sorry, you know what? 15, yes, for me. Did you have my vote on that one? Uh, well, let's do it right now. 15. Okay, 15. 16. Okay. 16. 16, we're doing right now. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen was the long one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seventeen. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Give me two more. One more. Okay. Yeah. Mine was up. Yeah. Four. Okay. And last one. Number 18. You're doing 18 right now. Yes. Yeah. We just had that discussion with Mr. We got us off. We got us off, yes. Okay, hopefully. Okay, that was all 18. Yes. Um, thank you. And then what's going to happen is at Triple I, um, based on these uh, votes, is how we're going to, Fenton will be vote at the IAS, IASB <coughs> uh, delegation at the AAA. Based on the, the straw poll you have there. Based on these results, correct. Okay. So, very good. Thank you. Um, James, we move on now to committee reports. That's correct. Bansonville Foundation, that's Juliet and Kit. Kit, I didn't, uh, really nothing um, to add. I don't think Julie called. I don't remember there being anything um, that's standing out to me. Yeah, I recall. So uh, we talked about trunk or tree. We funded that. We wrote a check for that. Um, no new business. Yeah. Pretty much. Just trying to still, I think, fill the you know the different officer positions too a little bit. Yeah. So it's really nothing I think that would put me to center. Nothing worth noting. <laughs> okay. I just All right. Report. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the finance committee. We, we got today. nothing. We met today. Except for this morning. Oh, the I mean, not this morning. Let me just have right before the meeting. Oh yeah. 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 That was our only activity for those two uh, yeah. two items yep. um, IASB delegate I'll like, I I'm gonna go back to the triple I with these results for the straw poll on these resolutions so that's really the only thing going on <coughs> with the IASB delegate um, so that will be done at triple I uh, lend was anyone at the lend? Not until this coming Friday. Yeah. Unless you want to go for breakfast. Okay. <laughs> now was was there, there? There was no meeting last month. Yeah. There's meeting this Friday. Yeah. There was. The, okay. Nothing to report. <laughs> Nothing, Nothing to report. To report. There you go. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, Netsec. Uh, I wasn't there because it was again just the. Uh, Big shot, so James was there. Superintendent. Sure. Real the quickly, NEDSEC, uh, we covered it. It was a financial audit review. Yeah. Monies are intact. They're a balanced budget. Um, there's integrity in their, their accounting. So Didn't they do nothing that last month, too? Uh, that was the preliminary Oh, okay. So we passed the audit. We'll review our audit next, okay. next board meeting. Okay, and then the policy also committee, the Patty and Kit. Nothing new right now. Nope. Right. Well, we, next month we have a, a meeting, 6 p.m. Right. Okay, we're going to, yeah. yeah. Uh, so an hour before the board meeting we'll meet. Okay. We'll have to do it, yeah. Um, okay, next board meeting, new business. Anything there? Yes. Uh, so it's uh, November 20th, a week early, because the following week will be a triple I. Uh, the finance uh, projection presentation with Rob Grossi will be one of the major items there. 2018-2019 um, financial audit presentation by our auditor, who are our auditors again, Bruce, 
Okay, we do that every year. Uh, by November 20th, we should have an, our ISBI report card on how well Finn's doing. Uh, we're really excited for that. And before our board meeting, 6 p.m. again, we have a, poli uh, a policy committee meeting. Okay, thank you, James. Uh, now we need to go into closed session. Mm -hmm. May I have a motion and a second to go into closed session for the purpose of the employment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing tes testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. However, a meeting to consider an increase in compensation to a specific employee of a public body that is subject to the local government wage increase Transpar transparency act may not be closed and shall be open to the public and posted and held in accordance with this act 5 ILS 120 slash 2 C1. Um, so move, Jackie. <laughs> Second. I forget where I was. <laughs> Second. Second. Thank you, Thank you Marianne. Marianne. We are in closed uh, session, and we will come back into open session. Zero. Yes. Rago. Yes. Yeah. Ramirez. Yes. Ting Pao Pong. Yes. Jalwick. Yes. Weedman. Yes. The agenda is the Associate Superintendent Principal Employment Agreement. Unless James uh, has anything more to say, we're going to go uh, no. right to the approval. May I have a motion that the Board of Education approve the Associate Superintendent Principal Employment Agreement? I will make that motion. And I'll second. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you, Jackie. Um, roll call, please, Mary. Peyton Howe. Yes. Ramirez. Yes. Ting Paul Pong. Yes. Jalloway. Yes. Figueroa. Yes. Rago. Yes. Wiedemann. Yes. All right, motion, motion has passed. Uh, may I have a, a motion and a second to adjourn? So I uh, make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. <laughs> <I'll second> <laughs> Thank you, Patty. I'll second that. You, you, okay. <laughs> there were so many seconds, I wasn't sure who was actually. Oh, just pick one. Peyton Howell? Yes. Howell? Yes. Ting Paul Pong? Yes. Jalowick? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Rago? Yeah. Yes. Ramirez? Yes. Weedman? Yes. Okay. Congratulations, y'all. Thank you. Yes. Yes.